Hey ladies and gentlemen, once again this is your brother Mr. Cage right here on uh, Lagos Minded Main Corner where we get to discuss, um, you know, um, Lagos Minded Men organization or project um, that, um, you know, is quite new in Zambia and uh, I, I believe um, only, you know, future can tell. There's uh, much more things that we are anticipating that may just, you know, uh, come out of this project. And uh, obviously, you know, the Bible says uh, um, a, the, the witness or the truth can only be established by one or two, three people. And so we have the man of God right here, Bishop Mpoma, who is uh, right here to help us uh, with uh, the attesting of uh, the existence of this particular organization because uh, he was one of the people that attended the conference that just came forth some time back. And he's actually coming from, uh, you know, uh, Knowing the Truth Ministries. Bishop, how are you? I'm um, great, and you Did I pronounce your name correctly? Mpoma or Mpoma? Mpoma. Mpoma. Are you Zambian, Bishop? I, I am uh, from Northern Province because when you pronounce it like Mpoma, you are talking of Wapra Province. Okay, so you are from uh, Northern, Northern Province. Mpoma, you are from Northern Province. <laughs> All right, uh, so Bishop, let's get, uh, let's hit the road running. Okay, um, uh, you are here to attest on the very fact that uh, you are a member of uh, Lagos Minded Men. Tell me, um, in your own words, what is Lagos Minded uh, Lagos men, minded men to you? Uh, to me, as uh, after attending to the conference which took place for almost a three weekend, covering the whole weekend, I came to realize that oh, this Lagos is really needed and uh, it's a thing that is making uh, you to understand it, to say, oh, when we are here on earth, we really have to wake up and see to it that we live a Lagos which is uh, uh, a clear picture of people, uh, of, to the people that they should remember you even mm. though you are not around, they are mm. able to figure you out right through the things that you, you have you left, left behind. behind. Yes. Okay. Um, so, so tell me as uh, Bishop Mkomwa, <laughs> yes. who are you in Lagos uh, Minded Men? Um, I, I'll tell you myself what I can just say as for now, I'm just one of the organizers because it's a, it's, it is there but it's new in our area. So we are just putting things in line under Bishop uh, Davis Banda. So yet we are to be sectioned in a position so that we work according, but as for now, we are all uh, uh, organizing for it to be known to many people. So, so in essence, you're saying you're part of uh, the leadership, right? Uh, definitely, because uh, as the man of God said, we are the founding leaders that are indeed fostering the organization in the Republic of Zambia. All right, now you tell me, what, what was the theme of the conference that you, you held? The film never changed, it is just about the men, uh, Lagos minded men. We, are talk we were taught about a man whose mind is just to leave a Lagos behind. But what's so important about leaving Lagos behind? There are a number of things that are really attached to that because uh, he, like one, when you are a human being, you mm -hmm. are not alone. You have children, you have relatives and you have so on. Not only that as well, when you are born in a certain particular place like you are in Zambia, mm. you need to think outside the box and say, what should I do as a contribution to the Republic of Zambia? That mm. will be really remembered even after I am not there. All right. Um, does it so much border on you being remembered or you bringing... Because I know, uh, for, for one, that um, there are certain people that have worked so hard for this nation, Zambia. 
and they've died, and sometimes they're not even remembered. So what, what gives you the oomph? Where do you draw the inspiration from? Is it from being remembered or you doing the noble cause? It should be the, uh, doing the noble cause, but however, uh, even the way we live as Zambians, we have seen it in the past, even in the Bible uh, area, you find that people have to be remembered. Now in the biblical realm, you find people are remembered just by name. There is Joseph, there is uh, uh, Barnabas, there is so on. But uh, to us now who are here today, we are trying to look at it and have a focus and say, they shouldn't just remember us by the names, but they should also remember us by the things that we have handed on. As the Bible says, we are the co-creators and with God. the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we need to at least to have certain things handed which are the value to the nation. All right, so when this core comes, the core of le living legacy, um, obviously what would come into one's mind is the fact that obviously people are living careless and people are not minding the importance of leaving legacy behind. What is the status quo? Do you think Zambians are living careless, or men are living careless, uh, the general populace? Or what's the, what could be your hypothesis? Uh, when you look at our population, it has been frying. So seeing it frying, we can look now, considering what the things that are done, in the Republic of Zambia, you can conclude that the, uh, the majority of the people are not serious about living a legacy. And the other additional information to that is when you talk to them about it, they are like running away from the reality. Just as the man of God around uh, uh, explained to say, don't leave the burden for a woman. You are the person that has to be forefront and think about the family. So all in all, Many people are not serious about it. So, so Bishop, uh, for a, a layman like me who's never been part of legacy minded men, obviously you, you are taught, you are trained, obviously you have a clear picture and vision to what it means to living legacy. But for people like me, how would I know that I'm not serious about living legacy? How would you tell that the next person, uh, the person next to you is not serious about living legacy? Are there symptoms? Are there signs? Are there, are there certain things that you point at to say, if a person looks like this or does certain things in this way, then you know they're not serious about living legacy? Yeah, there are indications like uh, when you look at our people around, you find that you, you, you see them at the tavern almost every day. Now when you calculate the amount of money they're spending on beer drinking, you end up realizing it's a lot of money. Adding on to that, to ask them, are you renting? They will uh, pronounce the it to say they are still renting. Then you realize they are not serious because uh, you have to think of your tomorrow, not only the today. Tomorrow must be also treasured. So, B Bishop, uh, talking about uh, um, uh, being minded of living legacy, are we looking at an instance, because from your explanation, uh, it's like if I amass so much wealth for myself and my family, that's legacy enough. Is legacy materialistic or a mental state of a human being? Regards uh, to the full understanding, it is fused all in all, in everything. You need also to have a regards whereby people can remember the intelligence which you had and then they also needed to see certain objects or things that are left behind because of your conduct or action. So, so for, for me, the bigger picture there then is about the mental setup, how people tend to look at things. What, what sort of programs do you have to change people's mindsets? Because uh, in, in as much as you would give money to other people, for as long as their mindset is still lagging behind, nothing will change at all. What sort of programs do you have that to change, that will impact the mindset of men, uh, you know, like permanently? One is that uh, we are running conferences. This conference which just ended is not the last, but we are still moving on to 
more conferences sensitizing about it. Like in my case, when I just heard about it, just reading Rika's Minded Men, I interpreted it to my spirit and I came to realize this is what we need. Now what is to be done uh, much more to sensitize to people is that there is also need to bring it down to our local language where people are able to understand because they say That's very uh, if you want to hide something to an African mm. you better put it in You're written. Right. So mm. we have to try ABCD so that at least uh, people are able to be uh, informed about it. But I am confident that after hearing two or three people come out from there. I, I, I'm very happy you have um, um, alluded to the fact that uh, a black person, <laughs> there is an illusion that a black person, you can only hide something from him when you put it in writing. You tell me, because a lot of people, obviously of your age, very few of the Zambian population, people of your age, would say they have developed the culture to read. How often do you read? How important is reading culture in Zambia? How are we developing it? How, how, to what extent have we gone in encouraging people to delve into reading? It's a thing that uh, we needed to encourage each and uh, 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 many are laughing on the certain children. You find they are young, they are saying I'm in grade 12, but they can't read fluently. So uh, what I can say in those lines is that uh, People should realize reading is what can help us very much to discover more of the things that are hidden much more even in books. So you find that uh, has our culture is not uh, really uh, it's not really a culture of reading, but this time we need to capitalize on it so that our people can realize and they can come back to the point of reading so that they had on the value they have. All right, so Bishop, as we wrap up, you tell me, what are you doing um, in lines um, uh, in regards to helping men to go back to the, uh, or maybe to brush off that notion of saying Zambian or African men don't read? What are you doing about it as latest-minded men? Are you holding conferences? Are you taking people back to school? Are you giving materials? Are you translating these uh, materials that you have in local languages? Or what are you doing about it? Uh, thank you very much for such a question. We are trying a lot. We are putting many things in place and we are much more trying to start the mind of a person and see what we can do to that person because we believe living a legacy is not about the, uh, the well-being people or the people who are not handicapped. Even those who are handicapped, we have to encourage them that there's something which they have to do. So we are to make a platform for them to at least understand and come to the grassroots. So, uh, uh, Bishop, how long will it take you to study the mind of people? It, it, will, it is not taking as long because we live with them, we know them, and certain things we know them. It's just a matter of realizing and finding out ways in which we can bring them to, to the sitting and reason together because if you talk to of going to a tavern all men will follow you but if you say there's a conference you find it, many men who laugh at you and who think of doing else things but we are to try the best so that they can come uh, to realize the importance of it all right so bishop i want you to look in the camera and talk to that somebody out there who's listening and watching us you encourage that man to just make up his mind and become part of the Lagos minded men. What are the benefits of becoming, you know, a member of uh, the Lagos minded men? Well, to all the men, uh, especially the Zambians, we are encouraging them to say whatever they they see, they have to treasure it because. Uh, you, they do not know exactly what is in that which they have just seen. So as they can hear about it, I encourage them that they can pick up their phones, phone us, so that they contact us and we talk much more. Like my phone line is 0979 
53 We can talk much more. All right. About my, my, my last question for you is of what benefit has Lagos Minded Men organization been to you as an individual? The, the, the benefit much more is to take up my position as a man because I don't have to. So in, in short, you are saying before the, the Lagos Minded Men, you were not man enough to take your role, to take up your role. I was really, but this also is adding on more value to what I'm doing because we don't have to, the book of Ecclesiastes says, we do not have to rest until when we die. When, when we die, we All rest right. forever. All right, so there you have it. You don't need to rest until you die. <laughs> All right, I'm enjoying every bit spent right here. And this has been your brother, Mr. Cage, right here on Lagos Minded Men. We'll see you next time. This has been um, um, your brother, of course, Mr. Cage, with uh, Bishop Pomoa. <laughs> we'll see you. It's been awesome. Thank you. Thank you. God All bless right. you. God bless you.